episode seven. Here we go. Here we go. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Sunday Best uh, with the two tea bags, Isuru Jinasena and Gavin Kelly. We out, here. Yeah. Episode seven, guys. Back again, with episode number seven, there's a lot to talk about, a lot going on. How's your week, man? My week's been good, man. I'm excited to start the show. Yeah. It's been a crazy week in the news as usual. So, so been, yeah, man. Put it to level three, and there's going to be a lot of changes happening uh, in level three. One of the major changes is is for the school kids. Back to school, back to reality. Ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we put it Do you think this is a good idea? The schools might reopen in June, except those in hot spots. Yeah, look, I mean, if you were if you were still in school, bro, would you want to go back, or are you happy with chilling at home? I don't think I would dig homeschooling because when you're at homeschooling, where are you gonna bunk? <laughs> in the kitchen sink next to Mr. Muscle and Handy Andy. <laughs> also, look, homeschooling is only nice if you've got things like PlayStation and internet. If you're a broke ass kid, <laughs> Thanks, <bro. laughs> you ain't got shit, bro. Homeschooling, uh. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's true. You got no friends. Now you're also broke. Uh, all you can do is like use a little bit of data and mix it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was going to send news, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it is it is risky, right? To send kids who know who aren't really good at social distancing to school. That's the thing, bro. How are you gonna how are you gonna expect kids to not socially interact? And how do you going to expect kids to wear the same mask? Like the same kids, when the kids come home, are they still going to be wearing the same mask? You know? <laughs> I found this mask in Lost and Found today. <laughs> but you know what's interesting about this article? It says schools might reopen in June except those in hot spots. I mean, what's a hot spot? Like? Where the, the numbers are too high. The infection rate is too high. So what's uh, Cape Town? Probably Cape Town, probably some schools in Gauteng even, but it's mostly, Cape Town's a mess, bruh. Yeah, but it says that there's a document that has seen 157,123 metric pupils in hotspot areas. They're going to go to special camps. Mm. Yeah. I'd like to go to a special camp, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think it's risky eh, for these kids to go back to school. Imagine dying for home economics, bruh. <laughs> so apparently it's only grade 7s and grade 12s that are going back, eh? Just those two grades? Yeah. Up to 7 and grade 11 are expected to return on a staggered basic. Clearly they mean grade 8, 9s and 10s. They don't give a shit about because they didn't even mention them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> bruh... I don't know, man. Maybe they should just cancel the school year or just like go homeschooling all the way. And then when it's exams, do the thing. Yeah, the problem with homeschooling is not everybody has access to, you know, Wi Fi and a computer, you know? Majority. But this is, yeah, this is where the government should give, like, you know, I don't know, like laptops or like sort of just basic necessities to get this thing working, yeah? Yeah, I don't know. I don't. It's, I don't know. It's not even the, the government. I think your corporates, like your Vodacoms, your MTNs, they should yeah. offering all students from whatever, from like the age twelve till twenty six, because university students should also count, you know. And then yeah, allow everybody to have a free data, like an uncapped data for their phones and stuff to access these educational sites, you know. Yeah, this is ridiculous. Not work, right? These kids aren't gonna do social distancing for shit. Yeah, bro, I imagine. I mean, if you have only 500 megabytes of data, you'll only get the, the two first laws of physics, you know, that's it. Just get the other ones. <laughs> now you're dumb <laughs> when it comes to exams because you ran out of data. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's a catch-22 because, you know, I don't feel like if I was homeschooled, I wouldn't be disciplined. I'm failing that year, bro. Yo, I'm failing fucked up. Yeah, I know me too, bro. With all these distractions, Netflix, YouPorn, Pornhub. Exactly. In this day and age, bro, to actually focus on a computer screen, on education. Ugh. 
Good God. I mean, when I was in school, the only the biggest distraction was probably like the girl, the hottest girl in the classroom, sit, like what, like, you know, having a short skirt. Now you got like, twenty tabs open and incognito mode. That's a fucking serious distraction, bro. Are <laughs> uh, you failing, boy? Are uh, you failing, dude? Hard. You're a kid. You're in your. You have hormones. You're a raging teenager, and now you must focus on algebra. <laughs> yeah, dude. No ways. Plus, you have social media things open. It's it's a disaster. Yeah. But you know what's what's really interesting about this whole school's opening? Angie Motecha, basic education minister, has made a statement saying, "I can't guarantee that nobody will die." And that's a good thing to say. Like, like, yo, man, it is what it is. <laughs> it's just what she's saying. <laughs> it's brutally honest, bro. It's like, yo, man. <laughs> Terms and conditions apply. Yeah, but I don't know. It's look. I mean, she said something like, "What? I'm I'm not putting my head on my head on the block." I've never yeah. heard that phrase before. Head on the block. I've heard cock on the block. See here, she is head on the block. I know it's hot on the block. She obviously couldn't say cock on the block because of obvious reasons. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot stand here tonight and say I put my head on the block. Nobody's going to die. I cannot do that. But we'll try our best to have everyone safe. Hey, your best. Try. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I feel sorry for kids, man. Like, not even kids. I feel sorry for the grandparents who have to deal with these kids that come home after just spreading their diseases. Okay, exactly. That's just, so it's not only them getting sick, it's them making other people sick. And then exactly. those people yeah. making other people sick. So I just think, yo man, nip it in the bud, yo. Nip, nip the school year in the bud. In the school, bro. Like, just have a gap year for everyone. We can understand. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you can all come back in 2021. We are just a repeat. If you're 20 in matric, it's okay, bro. We understand. COVID-19, bro. <laughs> I do feel sorry for the matrix though, bruh. Because like now no now your matric dance. Exactly, bruh. <laughs> your matric dance now has to be over Zoom. Ha, ha. The theme for your for matric dance will be Zoro, bruh. Everyone's wearing masks. <laughs> <laughs> ah shit. <laughs> Yo, how are you gonna lose your virginity? Uh, dude, I think matriculants, most of them have already lost their virginity, bro. Come on, man. Oh, they're out here fucking. South Africa, bro. South Africa. <laughs> they're out here fucking. I wasn't, I, I wasn't, I wasn't fucking in matric. I was, I was neither, was, neither was I, bro. Neither was I. I was, <laughs> I was in my book listening to hip hop music. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like playing basketball. I was like innocent as fuck, bro. I was, I was so getting, innocent. Dude. I was just getting friend zoned everywhere, bro. <laughs> I had like pimples and braces, so I had to like stay in my lane. Oh shit, you had braces in school, bro? Yeah, man. Yeah, at least that means you keep the straight for life. Yeah, so, we, so you're saying when you used to eat apples, you used to chop it up into small pieces and... Yeah, <laughs> like, a, like, a, like, a, like a thug, bro. <laughs> like a thug. <laughs> oh, like a granny. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, bro, <laughs> your flavors, I guess. Exactly, bro. So she's saying she can't guarantee that anybody will die. Um, but let's talk about initiation schools where people have been dying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, since day one, bro. So this uh, title says winter initiation season cancelled uh, over fears of quick COVID-19 spread. So the winter initiation is basically in a lot of African tribes. Guys go to the kids go to the mountains to become a man and they go through a process of circumcision and so it looks like these schools are gonna be cut short. <laughs> I knew this was gonna happen when they cancelled the boys to men concert. <laughs> <laughs> I already knew, bruh. Yeah, it looks like when they, they probably made the announcements like look here, ladies and gentlemen, looks like uh, this season is going to get the chop. <laughs> I'm sure some people are like, ah, oh, guys, can't we do it through Zoom? We can do a virtual background of a mountain. <laughs> do it the same. <laughs> I'll do it at home. 
<laughs> then you have to send like a dick pic of like a before and after. Yeah. <laughs> Because we could not afford the risk of lives of our children. I mean, either way, going for this thing is risking the lives of the children either way, so. Yeah, it's always, yeah, this one is always being contentious, this topic, eh? Yeah. So, I don't know. I mean, would you rather die from a heavy cough and sneeze or bleeding from your dick? Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, one. <laughs> <laughs> the one way it doesn't involve my dick as long as my dick works i'm good yeah so let's say this thing gets cancelled forever right yeah what do you think are other ways to initiate people like initiate boys to make them men oh, yeah i mean what what makes a man from a boy besides uh, a driver's license and <laughs> A drink of your age. <laughs> when you be, turn 18 years old and you become a full adult. <laughs> I don't know. Also, some people, some guys get to 40 and they're never adults, bro. And then there's 15 year olds who are more mature than people I know. So it's, you know, what's, what's foreskin got to do with it? What's foreskin got to do with it? <laughs> what's foreskin got to do with it? <laughs> Just the second hand skin. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah we said this before we 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 team foreskin right no i'm team foreskin man and uh, like i really feel look look i'm also team freedom of choice if you want to whatever spiritual or cultural or religious belief system that you have go for it but as my, as far as the whole the science goes in terms of i mean hygiene just clean your dick and in terms of Sex and, and reproduction for 20 seconds. For 20 seconds, <laughs> is it 30 seconds or 20 seconds? 20. So, you must wash your dick like how you wash your hands, bro. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm team, team four skin, bro. bro. I, want I want the, the full, full subscription. subscription. I don't want, I don't want, uh, <laughs> Well, I don't know. I mean, the, the foreskin is the male clitoris. I like that shit being stimulated, but I'm, I don't know, man. <laughs> I'll flip my beat. I want my gravy with my pop. <laughs> yeah. So are we done with uh, this? Are we going to cut this short? Are we, are we... <laughs> Cut. So uh, this headline says, Miss S.A. entrant oh, shit, in hot water over previous... Yeah racist tweets um so this story is basically about uh this lady named bianca shumi she was applying for the miss essay pageant and it turns out twitter went and dug deep and found a lot of controversial tweets that she said in the past and therefore she had to drop out well i don't know if she dropped out or they kicked her out but yeah some hey, next thing you know your career is over antoine over some characters. <laughs> yeah, brother. You tweet too many tweets on these for life, bro. <laughs> I mean, but also why people, I mean, it's a, it's a beauty pageant. Are we seriously going to be looking at the, the character of people? <laughs> what about selling bathing suits, bro? <laughs> yeah, bro. I'm, I am disappointed. I don't get to see her in a bathing suit. Mm. Yes, yeah, that mm. looks like a good time. But yeah, yeah it bro, is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. But you want to see some of the tweets or where is it? Yeah, no, at, at the end of the day, the tweets weren't uh, Miss South Africa quality. More like, uh, I don't know, people like, are I mean, saying Miss Oranya. Here's a joke. Oh, here's her racist joke. He's so black, they had to change the background to white. LMFA. Oh. Okay, that's just not funny, but. Uh, yeah, that's not funny. <laughs> Also, why, black anyway. I don't know, but why do people on Twitter speak like African Americans? Have you ever noticed? Oh, I've never noticed that. Check it out, dude. The person could be from fucking Philippines, from <laughs> Bangladesh, white person from Norway, but they all tweet like DMX, yo. <laughs> <laughs> We've been uh, conditioned, bruh. True gentlemen do exist. They're just attracted to ladies, not sluts like you. I don't, I don't know. I personally don't see what's wrong with this. <laughs> if, if, you're, if you feel like a slut and you're offended by this, that's your own perception of yourself and your self-esteem. 
<laughs> I'm offended that she said true gentlemen are only attracted to ladies. I'm attracted to sluts and I'm yeah, dude, I, exactly. <laughs> I'm offended. <laughs> There's no such thing as slut shaming, only slut shagging. There's nothing attractive about a girl who's super skinny. Um uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> It's, it's like you know we get fat shaming but we don't really get skinny shaming yeah why don't we get thin shaming bro i guess i, I guess know. if it was thin shaming it would be like insulting poverty you know that's poverty shaming yeah, yeah that's poverty. it's classism it's classism <laughs> <laughs> yeah so get it right right black twitter it's not racist it's classism it's classism yeah ever seen an ugly woman with three or more kids and wonder to yourself, who keeps fucking you? Once again, I'm offended. I'm the guy that keeps fucking you. <laughs> <laughs> How many kids you got, bro? <laughs> I feel personally attacked, Bianca. What the fuck? Oh, man. Another one, no sluts. The reason that all the boys like your photo isn't because you're pretty, it's because you're almost naked. Well, you're about to enter Miss Essay where you're almost naked, you stupid bitch. <laughs> Look at your profile picture. Are you wearing anything? All I see is skin. <laughs> In fact, I, I, bet, I bet you if we go to an Instagram, we'll find half naked pictures. Oh, I was there, bruh. I was there. I've done my research. What is it? What is it? Yeah, bruh. It was fine. She is fine. She is fine. Just, just not very fine in the head. Um, you're not popular. Your vagina is. Yo, shots fired. Is that is that to the actresses who who did vagina monologues? <laughs> Heavy, bro. You're not popular. Your vagina is. Yeah. Here's another one. White guy, babe, you cold. Here's my jacket. Black guy, you cold. Nobody told your ass to come outside with no jacket trying to be cute. You see what I'm saying? Why is she talking like this, bro? <laughs> yeah, no, but that's the thing. You're not reading in the right accent. You got to read it in the right. You're going to be like, white guy. Babe, you cold? Here's my jacket. Black guy. You cold? Nobody <laughs> told your ass to come outside with no jacket trying to be cute? What the fuck? <laughs> you got to read it in the right accent. Uh, I was reading it in her accent, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why it's offensive. If you read it in the right accent, it's not offensive. Oh shit! Well, I don't know. I don't actually change my accent if if it's if the race changes. That's weird. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, there's more. There's more. There's more. But please, there's more. <laughs> I'm not saying you're fat, but wait, 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 wait. what about the people who are liking these tweets? What about them? What about them, bro? There's 560 retweets, 89 likes. That's more than I've ever had, bro. You know what? <laughs> I agree with her. <laughs> I'm not saying you're fat, but if I had to pick five of the fattest people I could think of, you would be three of them. That's a good joke. <laughs> it's clever. It's clever. Yeah. Hey, that's a damn good joke. I mean, if we were in the street, like in the street, but in school, and guys were, you know, battling and dissing each other, this is a good one. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, that's the thing about Twitter. It's there forever. That's yeah, why yeah. I keep I keep my sh my fat shaming and my slut shaming for WhatsApp stories, bruh. Yeah, I keep it for my girlfriend. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Shots fired, son. <laughs> no, I'm joking, dude. My girlfriend's amazing. Um, that's it, eh? <laughs> That's yeah, this is basically Black Twitter tore her ass up, bro. Black Twitter fucked her up. Yeah, no, I think it's fair. Look at what white Twitter did to Kevin Hart. So it happens both ways. True, true, true. Apparently, there were other there were other uh, contestants who also got attacked. Um, but uh, yeah, we're not going to talk about her, them because this was the one that trended. <laughs> <laughs> and she's the hottest one as well. So. Yeah, she is. She's a lot finer than the others. Fine. So Twitter police, Twitter police. Uh, it's crazy that we get Twitter police now. Yeah. How how do you join the the, the force? <laughs> what's the training program? <laughs> what's the what's the... Your, your, your your thumb speed? <laughs> how fast can you load data? <laughs> Yo, you have to be. 
And these guys went back to 2014 or something like that, bro. Yeah. No, I don't know, dude. I, th- I feel like the Twitter police is just, it's stalking tendencies, bro. I think to qualify to join the force, your stalking levels have to be good. Yeah, Super Saiyan stalker, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Super Saiyan stalker. <laughs> so this article, this is what Twitter police target two more Miss SA entrants. So these two ladies here also got attacked. Uh, one girl's name is Zizile Ntembu. She she dissed this guy about his yellow, his tooth. It's gold tooth. Is that a, isn't that a gold tooth? I don't know. For me, it looks like a a, a mealy meal kernel. <laughs> Yo, bro, I like his confidence. He's smiling, boy. That's the way, bro. But uh, anyway, she jabbed him about his cooking and his looks. So then Twitter was like, no, that's disrespectful. You can't be Miss SA if you're going to insult people's cooking and their teeth. So Vela, your shit can't stink if you're Miss South Africa, eh? Yeah, dude, you got to be clean cut. Because apparently this is cyberbullying. So... And then there's this chick, Onida. <laughs> I didn't understand this tweet, but it's quite funny. But you obviously, you have to read it. I can't read it. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, at least she didn't use a hot R. You know? Yeah, at least. At least, at least there was no... She did the hip-hop. Yeah. Uh, she didn't use... So anyway, so this girl said, bitch, N-word... Uh, at e k k w lol okay as wipe free tweet. I don't understand this tweet to be honest. No, there's so there's so much happening. It's offensive because there's so much happening. Yeah, it's offensive because who tweets like? And it was, bruh, and it was posted from a BlackBerry. Ah, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but it was but to be fair, it was 2012. So yeah, exactly. People change. Do you think? What about that argument <clears throat> or that side of the argument? People change. Should we really judge them solely on like things they tweeted back in 2012? Yeah, dude, of course, bro. I also feel as if people change. It's not fair that because you should be judging your actions from the past. I mean, if you got hired for a job that you're good at for a specific skill, what does all the other shit have to do with it? You know? Exactly. But I mean, on the other side of the coin, also, like you are an ambassador to to younger to the younger generation, and if you are a racist, a bigot, uh, a homophobe, uh, a sexist, all of those ists and isms, then you shouldn't be in that in the limelight, you know? You shouldn't be for Miss South Africa. You should be for, I don't know, yeah, Miss Brakpan, Miss Oranya, <laughs> Miss <laughs> Eden Vale. <laughs> <laughs> but Miss South Africa, bro, like we've got like a traumatic past. We don't need old tweets to come. Imagine those tweets came out and she was like, Competing for Miss Universe. Yo, yo, yo. Yeah, that would have been like, how did she even get to Miss Universe before even, you know? Exactly, yeah. Yo. But I was thinking this, this like tweet thing, it's like, it's it's hectic because it, it happens to everybody now. Kevin Hart, a bunch you know, of celebrities. What's crazy, dude, I, I, can, I can tell you one thing for sure. After this happened, a lot of people went into their twi- timelines and kept scrolling and did the tweets. <laughs> I wanted to do that, but I'm so lazy, bro. I'm like, nah, play. I'll take my risk. My girl, my girl and I did it, but it only ended at the beginning of 2019. And we're like, what the fuck? I can't, I can't go further back. <laughs> yo, imagine you get to heaven and there's like St. Peter and he's like, yo, so yeah, you, it looks like you're all good to get into heaven, but we just have to check your old tweets before we let you in. <laughs> I, don't I wasn't it. always woke that's all i know bruh i wasn't always woke <laughs> yeah dude, but that's the thing what what is being woke is it being pol- there's a difference between being woke and being politically correct you know i think <clears throat> to make i just simply think woke is just being aware right so it, obviously like bianca wasn't aware that she was being highly offensive that's the thing, right? Yeah, look, I, but that's true. But also, I think if you are a Caucasian, you must also know your responsibility in terms of... That's what I'm saying. Yeah, you must know. But she, she's not aware. No, she's she lives not. in this bubble of like yeah. privilege and just like 
maybe her parents didn't tell her, her friends didn't tell her, like her social, her social like uh, circle was just yeah. like not helping yeah. her at all, right? She lives in this yeah. bubble, and like now, you know who now, I blame? I blame the coconut token girl who was in their group of friends. I blame that girl. <laughs> she didn't speak up. She didn't speak up. She if more if, look, okay, I'm gonna tell all the coconuts out there in your group of white friends, if they ever say some shit, stand up for your rights, bro. Yeah. Then you can stop yeah. you know. Yeah, you I agree it. with you. Yeah. Because they allow it, they slide, they think, okay, these guys aren't gonna be my friends if I say, yo man, that's racist. Why are you hanging around with them if they're fucking racist, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, true, eh? Yeah, but it's it's interesting though because there was a guy who tweeted about it was a very classist tweet as well. He said that uh oh if anyone knows white girls at 13, they were foul mouthed, what what you guys who went to these rural schools wouldn't understand. So Ooh. people went on him like, yo, dude, how this guy is classist and racist to his own kind. I, <laughs> They're all of the above, bro. All of the above. <laughs> That's Uncle Uncle Rack is to the max, bro. <laughs> Out your uh, rural shaming, bruh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this article here, it says, Watch, did Eastern Cape Health MEC Sindiswa Gomba fart during live TV interview? So um, the MEC of the Eastern Cape was interviewed recently and there was a video circulating on, on WhatsApp. Even my girlfriend, she sent it to me as well. And initially, I didn't hear the fart sound. I just heard her break English. And I thought, okay, she's just breaking English. I don't know why. Why is this so funny? <laughs> then, then someone said, uh, it kept coming to me through other like WhatsApp groups. And then I heard the fart, and I thought, ah, did this woman like? Did she was was she so nervous about her fart that she broke English, or did she break English because she farted? <laughs> so yeah. yeah. I mean, prevention approach to health giving equally embedded in primary health care, which then such and such 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 <laughs> will suggest I'm sorry about that. <laughs> we are going to have uh, she very proud herself, bruh. But now you see there's things saying that it, it was edited and they, someone added the fart in there. No, no well, well. I don't know I don't about, know about, about that, that, but she did fart. She said, she said sorry, sorry about, about that. that. Which is nice. nice. At least she's got, got manners, manners right? right? But did she say sorry about that because she broke English? Or did she say sorry about that because of the fuck? How, how did she break English? What did she say? Well, su such and such, such, such. Right. I mean, <laughs> approach to health giving equally embedded in primary health care, which then such and such, 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 such. <laughs> will suggest, I'm sorry about that, will suggest, <laughs> to have. <laughs> such and such and such, such. Yo, the, the English was proper broken there. Holy shit! <laughs> that's why I thought she's. That's I think that's what she was saying sorry about. And then someone just added this fart sound. But people are saying no. It's, some people are saying no. It's legit. And then, but she, apparently the Eastern Cape Health Department is saying no, she didn't. So people, someone's mischievous and malicious. But also, what did they say here? They said something like, "She's not ill mannered," but I think she, she's very mannered because. Yeah, it says he, he said the farting clip seeks to portray the MEC as someone with no manners. Um, I think she has a lot of manners because she said sorry <laughs> about that. Yeah. <laughs> if I fart, I don't say sorry. I blame the other person, bro. Like, <laughs> Those who smelt it dealt it. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me, player. It was not me. Yeah, bro. That's, that's such good manners, dude. Probably. Yeah, dude. Good manners to say sorry about that. Which then such and such 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 Suggest. Did you see the way she shakes her head? <laughs> <laughs> it jolted it up. Yeah, you know when the sap and beans strike back. <laughs> it's from it's from the air pressure from the asshole, bro, pushing up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's either in or out, boy. <laughs> yeah, bro. Rather, rather out than in, I always say. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, it's dangerous because you know people on the internet are so quick. Next now, next thing you know, she's on a house song. That whole like when people fart, they put the saliva on the fart, <laughs> <laughs> and then they share the fart. Hey, bruh, it's dangerous out here, bruh. When people fart, such and such, it's all in the air. Such and such. <laughs> Your December is gonna be such a groove. 
Because all these things are going to come back in December, bro. And we're going to be parting to this music now. Bro, it's going to be crazy. But here's the thing. Here's, here's the thing that says watch the original interview here where you don't hear the... Also, f- can we just pay attention to the sign language? <laughs> when there's a fart. The such and such... What is important and that I should highlight is that all of us are moving towards universal health care and Tuba is known for actually its national health system, which to us is exactly the same as will be delivered through NHI, then suggest that the Tubans are going to instill and actually make us go back to a curative, I mean, a prevention approach to health giving equally embedded in primary health care, which then such a such a such a such a <laughs> will suggest I'm sorry about that. Oh will that. you know what she did? She didn't fart, she went <laughs> from the back of her thing because the words were fucking in the back of her throat. So she went, you know when you <laughs> like that. You did that jump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so then people misinterpret it as a thought. Which to us is exactly the same as will be delivered through NHI. Then suggest that the Cubans are going to instill and actually make us go back to a curative, I mean, a prevention approach to health giving, equally embedded in primary health care, which then such as such as such as. <laughs> will suggest, I'm sorry about that, will suggest that we are going to have a rough <laughs> I don't know, bro. It's tough, it's tough to tell. Something did happen in the mouth, I won't lie, but... Yeah, I, I think the sound, the sound came from the back of her throat. Because I was also like, how can a fart that's happening behind her go that loud into the microphone? Uh, yeah, eh? <laughs> that's true, eh? So, that's very true, but... <laughs> I won't lie, for if it was a fart, then it was a powerful fart because it jolted her. Yeah. But also, I mean, at least she's passing gas outside. <laughs> <laughs> Not in an elevator if she did fart. True, bro. Nah. She's got manners. So, uh, this title says, AKA and Sees Where Domo Saga continues. So, if you guys have been on Twitter, and it's, well, especially South African Twitter, there's been a beef between. A rapper, aka, and presenter, Cesar Lomo. That's what he does. He's a presenter. Um, yeah, he's like a poor man's maps mapper now. He's a low, he's a low budget maps maps mapper now, bro. No thrills, no spills, <laughs> no girls. And so here, apparently, the beef was about aka uh, saying what. He said something about uh, Cizwe being an attractor, being a farmer, um, like Casper, because they both, I think they're both into farming or whatever, and there were pictures of them farming. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, bro, this beef is weird, bro. This beef is so strange. Yeah, dude, I don't understand. This, I mean, they're not even, they're not even cow farmers and the this beef. So, <laughs> but then, then Cizwe almost said something about um, that you you'll fuck him up, uh, something like that. And I'll fuck you up for free. Well, yeah, he said he said I'll fuck you up for free because Casper and AKA are going into beef in, um, into the boxing ring soon, and there's a contract in terms yeah, of yeah, and there's money involved. Yeah, obviously, yeah. they said I'll fuck you up for free, and then AKA responded saying any time you placed and you finished, and then then AKA went and said something about his grandfather uh, is what rhymes with Da Vinci. And then, and then I saw recently, today actually, AK issued an apology about this, about him going off. Yeah. yeah. AK copped that like a bitch, bruh. <laughs> Imagine Tupac saying sorry to Biggie. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't compare Caesar with Lomo and AK to Tupac and Biggie. <laughs> Let's not compare this beef to Tupac and Biggie. <laughs> These are guys on lockdown and nothing to do but just, you know, go on their keyboards and tweet away. Uh, this is exactly my issue with this. This is like, this is not beef, man. This is just like... Yeah. I don't even know what this is, man. Yeah, I miss the days when beef was, you know, hard bars on a beat, guys dissing each other. Or a music video now, it's everything going on. in, going in. That's on Twitter, bro. Now everything's on Twitter. It's 
Everything's on Twitter. Like, you're not going to hurt anybody on Twitter, guys. Exactly, bro. He opened his, oh, yeah. So, AKA dissed Caesar Olsen and said Ninja Cats because he calls his, his, all his homies or people ninjas. And then AKA did this, which is quite funny, though. Quite funny, though. <laughs> you got a designer. That's pretty dope. You got a, like a designer, it's a, too. It's a- <laughs> Yeah, and then uh, apparently, um, and then he apologized. Yeah, he apologized, and then there was also Ricky Rick who got involved and said, you know, this whole AKA and Casper Nyovest beef, it's it it might be nice for you know clout or whatever, but it's it's really taxing on the on the hip hop industry, which is true, bro. Like we don't. These guys are so self-absorbed, just making it about themselves. I think maybe one of their homies in the background, and they just text each other saying, "Yo, dog, I'm gonna say some shit about you. You should, we should respond like this, and that way we'll blow up, we'll get publicity going." Yeah. Exactly. Instead of making tweets, why don't you guys make songs? Yeah, dude, make music. Yes, yes. <laughs> You know, <laughs> that's so true. I, I actually believe in that conspiracy. I think it's like this whole thing they have like proper meetings with like a publicist. I'm like, yo, guys, we need to stay relevant. Exactly. You know, the, sh- the streets can't forget about us. So let's this this just make this nonsense about this beef. So it's not even the streets. It's uh, nerds online, and but also now this stuff is in the news. Why the fuck is this in the news, bruh? Bruh. <laughs> What is Independent Online doing, bro? Jesus. <laughs> Why are we even talking about this? <laughs> I'm done with it. Why are we giving them attention? Yo, fuck Caesar Glomer. Fuck AKA. Fuck Casper. Make music, you sons of bitches, bro. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. Uh, <laughs> Yo, Casper, your verse clears the air on him being an AKA stand. This I found very interesting. So it turns out Casper. Talking about old tweets. Casper, yeah, talking about old season digging up. Casper used to be an AKA fan. Yes. When he was on the come up. Yeah. That's crazy, bro. And he's so, he's so like sweet, yeah. It's like AKA's imagination is wild. Not too many artists with such a gift. That's why I'm such a fan. Hashtag AKA Awards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But can I tell you something? This right here exposes entertainment industry and like sucking dick for guys above you if you if you personally believe that you're better as an mc as a rapper why are you coming into the game and now like sucking dick to try and get thing and then all of a sudden when you blow up then you you, you share your real thoughts it's like me and you shitting on all these great comics in the industry then we blow up and all of a sudden, all of a sudden you know, yeah. but obviously there's no beef in comedy like hip-hop but, um, well, I don't know, what about that, what's that, uh, Tall Ass Mo and Paper Cut? <laughs> Yo, let's, let's not even go. go. Let's not even... <laughs> <laughs> those, those guys, the, their beef always had seasoning. <laughs> 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 Who said it first? Tall Ass Mo? It was a flavor, 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 flavor. <laughs> Who said it? <laughs> flavor, 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 flavor. <laughs> Is it seasonings or flavor, flavor? Um... That's, that's the only beef in stand-up comedy. Eh? Yeah. yeah. And beef. We have beef with guys that owe us money, but that's another story. <laughs> yeah, that's true. This article here says, Overnight raids in Delft reveal massive thick Mandrax, Mandrax stash. So this article is basically about a huge drug bust that the police found of 190,000 Mandrax tablets and 379.6 grams of tuk, 105.6. I know what tuk is. Tuk is that Breaking Bad drug, right? No, crystal meth. What the fuck is Mandrax? Yeah, I don't know, bro. I think it's like a... Let's actually Google Mandrax. It's... So where can I get some? <laughs> <laughs> Man... Mm-hmm. I'm sure the LGBTQ will be upset about Mandrax soon. It'll just be- Mandrax effects. Go to a Mandrax effects. Mandrax is a small tablet varying in color that is method quaylone. It's, a, it's just what a, are the effects? It's a sedative and a hypnotic medication. It's quaalude. Ah. 
Probably that shit Mac Miller was taking. You think he died from Mandrax? Uh, amongst other things, eh? Just using the treatment of insomnia and the muscle relaxant. Hectic. Have you ever had? Have you ever tried it? Unfortunately not, bruh. But, uh, <laughs> you know, YOLO. You gotta try everything once before you knock it. Yeah, but I don't think I'd ever try it, Dick. I like my teeth too much, bruh. Exactly, bro. I like chewing. <laughs> yeah, bro. Yo. Unless you want to Tiger King this shit and make a straight man gay. Can, can women use mandrakes? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> the LGBTQ has requested that we change Mandrax to just Drax because drugs have no, no gender identity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, Mandrax is toxic masculinity. <clears throat> Before Mandrax goes to the mountain, it's called Boy Drax. <laughs> So bad. Wow. Yeah. The free show is just the free show. The free show. It's a free show. <laughs> yeah, that's all we got on drugs. If you guys have any comments about drugs or anything you've heard of, please uh, leave it in the comments. What, what do you think happens to the drugs when the police get them? Do they just stash it away? They probably just deal them again or just put in a cut for dealers and say, listen, distribute this shit. Let's make money out of it. I mean, you, we've all seen Breaking Bad, Ozark. <laughs> You know, like, these cops are dodgy, bro. It's like, it, you have to be, man. But imagine, like, I mean, let's talk about an ethical cop. What does he do? Does he just crush them up and then burn everything? Yeah, I guess that would be the purpose, right? Just to get rid of the the stash, because it's obviously going to do more harm than good if it, stay, if, it is, if it still exists. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, otherwise they'll go back onto the streets. But I mean, I've heard a lot of things about the U.S. Apparently, the police force are very involved in the, like the cocaine business or using cocaine because the, mm. you know, the DEA takes up all the cocaine from all these drug dealers and they don't know what to do with it. So rather than selling, they just become users. And that's why these guys become like these so much police brutality because they're just raging on cocaine. Like, ah, <laughs> on that cocaina, man. Yeah, that like, white girl magic. It's like, I took the white powder. I must beat the black powder. <laughs> <laughs> it's a vicious circle. All a vicious line. Yeah. A vicious line. That's definitely what it is. <laughs> Yo, this one scares me, bruh. What the fuck is happening? Oh, let's, uh, let's, let's talk about the elephant in the room. <laughs> <laughs> or the lack of elephants. The lack of six of them just died in jail. Dude, Botswana Pro's mysterious death of 56 elephants. This is insane, bro. What is happening in bots? How can 56 elephants just drop dead? With, it's like and it's not... Uh, and if you're thinking if it's poaching, it's not poaching because the carcasses are intact. Yeah. They didn't take the, they didn't take the tasks either. Right over two months, 56 dead. You think the, the, the Rona virus is getting into wildlife? Yo, bro, it's interesting. Or it could be something else. It could be something new. Because this thing did start from animals, so it could be a new thing now. But apparently there was an anthrax outbreak. Yo, hectic. You can live in dormant soil for years. Anthrax can be in the soil for years. Mm. So, Vela, anything can kill you, eh? Yeah, but you know what's so interesting about this article? It says, Botswana's hunting season was supposed to be open in April, but was temporarily suspended because of coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> Shame, not even the hunters can get some. But I don't understand, but like, how does hunting... Surely, I mean, do you hunt in like 40 people? It's not like two, three people who hunt together. It's not like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're not squat deep when you're hunting, right? Exactly, That's bro. I think if you hunt with more than 10 people or five people, it becomes mob justice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Two's a crowd, three's a party, four's mob justice, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness! <laughs> I can't even believe I can't believe they still allow hunting. Even Jesus. So no hunting. So those guys in China don't have erections right now. They're struggling. Yeah, China's there's a huge flaccid population there. Ah <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, Brad! I oh, need my rhino, rhino horn. horn. Fuck, Fuck you, coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> So this article is about the Premier League. Premier League training is set to resume this week. Uh, there's been a lot of news about a lot of the football leagues coming back into action. Um, I don't know if you saw the Bundesliga was, was showing already. Eh? Bundesliga is back, man. Apparently it was awkward as fuck because the stadiums were empty. You could hear the players like, like curse and swear. Yeah, I mean, I remember before lockdown, a lot of the games were in closed doors, like behind closed doors you wouldn't see a lot of uh, crowds I remember there was a video of Cristiano Ronaldo fake clap, uh, high-fiving the audience or the crowd <laughs> <laughs> what do you think do you think soccer should come back I don't know man like I think it shouldn't come back because I don't want to see Liverpool win this shit <laughs> also yeah I'm Man United as well bro it's not like we're going to make the top four we're going to struggle so thank you bro. just cancel the season bro cancel school cancel the season I know, I know. There's a lot, of, a lot of sports fans out there who really want soccer to the like, sports to start again. But for the sake of Man United fans, no. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah dude. Let's let's skip let's skip 2020, bro. Yeah, but it it is dangerous as well because soccer is a contact sport, right? Yeah, dude. But, apparently, a lot of the guys are still COVID nineteen positive, man. Like, yeah. So you're gonna it's gonna be dodgy, but I guess. You could also use it to your advantage, right? Like, <laughs> if you want to beat a defender, now you can just like cough in Yana. <laughs> Yo! Commentators, commentators, oh, Pogba with the step over and the cough. <laughs> if, the, if the referee shows you a card, just go to his face like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> he wants to give you a yellow. It's like, hey, for <laughs> sec. <laughs> Do you, do you think it'll, we'll ever get to that stage where the stadium start becoming filled with screens of people watching and then the, the audience sound comes from people's screens from the microphone? That's hilarious. <laughs> That'd be cool though. I think that's, uh, that's, that's not a bad alternative. Because but... like, I don't know if you've ever seen these adverts, like these futuristic adverts where you see people. Like, I mean, like if you, holograms. Yeah, like and holograms and, and shit like that. Yeah. Like in, that, like, like in that episode of Black Mirror, you know, when they're watching Idols. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, uh, it's holograms and like yeah. cartoons and fake things. Exactly. Yeah. Emojis and whatever. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's how, that's how stand-up comedy, that's what happened to stand-up comedy right now. We, we do stuff like this and we get emojis in the comment section for, to know if it, up. it was a good joke or not. Yeah, no more, no more sounds of laughter. Yeah, just laugh emojis. But uh, in talking about the crowd, I think um, a lot. Of, like, I mean, I, I personally don't don't enjoy soccer without a crowd, bro. Yeah, just like it has to happen, bro, because it's part of the atmosphere. Exactly. That's uh, that's what's what's so, so thrilling about the sport. The way the crowd erupts. When something crazy happens, I mean, imagine that moment when Aguero scored that goal when they'd won the league on the final day, on the final game of the season, and the way the crowd went crazy. If there was no crowd there, ah, it would have just been like it's over. <laughs> it would have been like I London love, with your sister. <laughs> I love this headline. Matches without fans sadder than dancing with your sister. Not in Brackpan. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, what? Luis Enrique clearly hates his sister, bro. Yeah, damn. Why are you sister shaming, bro? <laughs> this guy, this guy needs to go for therapy and sort out his, his relationship with his sister, bro. Hard, bro. Family issues. Why are you bring your family issues to to the public, bro? Yeah, dude. And who's to say his sister doesn't have dance moves, bro? 
<laughs> it's just dancing. Dancing with your sister could be fun, bro. Why is it sad? Maybe he wants that like that twerking sort of dancing, like instead of what his sister. Oh, a little bum and grind. Yeah, go to Brackbun, like we said, bro. <laughs> but yeah, it's. That's why, That's why I, cool, I, cool, I, I do I miss do sport, sport, but like, like also, so, I don't know what sport without the ingredients. Of exactly. The thing. Like the sport, yeah. Watching live sport isn't just about the actual sport. Otherwise, we'd be watching women's soccer, you know? <laughs> <laughs> or, or what's that uh, four day franchise cricket? <laughs> Oh, bl- uh, blind cricket. Have you ever seen blind cricket? Oh. <laughs> they roll the thing on the floor, the ball. The ball, the ball has sand in it and it goes, shh. <laughs> so, guys, do you really like cricket that much? My goodness. <laughs> now, imagine you're fielding a <laughs> third man. <laughs> you can't hear. You're waiting for that sound, bro. <laughs> Catch it! <laughs> no, it, the ball never goes in the air, dude. It's always along the ground. It's like so. <laughs> so you don't say catch it. You say stop it. Yeah, I just stop it. I don't know. Trap it. <laughs> Trap it. Trap. Ah, blind cricket, bro. You're blind, You're blind, blind, blind. It's blind. <laughs> but uh, it's, we're talking about crowds. Um, you, you gotta love. You gotta love uh, Korea, bro. This is the solution, eh? They were like, okay, so... <laughs> FC saw left deflated after sex doll gaff. Yeah, so, so they brought yeah, so, yeah, in mannequins. They put, I, don't, I don't... Are they mannequins or sex dolls? They, they, they were supposed to be mannequins, but yeah, they look very similar to uh, sexual dolls. Yeah, it's funny how in the background you see all these... Soccer players in the background just looking at these. <laughs> <laughs> looking thirsty, boy. <laughs> it's like thirsty in the background. What up, girl? <laughs> Come here often. But also, I love, I lo- also, as a professional soccer player, would you be able to concentrate if you saw sex dolls in the crowd? <laughs> <laughs> and I like, check, check the sex dolls go down. I like that the sex dolls are wearing masks as well. <laughs> <laughs> to cover up their blowjob mouths. <laughs> I'm sure someone was like, hey man, why all these mannequins look like they're hungry for hot dogs? <laughs> why are they all whistling? <laughs> <laughs> they got something in their mouth that's hot. Why does it look like they drank hot soup? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That one is suffering from hypothermia. <laughs> <laughs> but credit to Korea. It is lifelike for Korea, I guess. Now imagine they do it in like the Premier League. It'd be like a mannequin throwing a banana about to do a racial slur <laughs> against a black soccer player. <laughs> <laughs> or like South, South African. African. Imagine South, South Africa did, did this for the PSR. The PSR. Be, like Be like mannequins with macarapas. <laughs> and, and, and cabbages next to them. Yeah. And bibles. <laughs> you know what? If I, if I was a soccer player after the game, I'd ask, yo, can I, can I grab one of those dolls and take it home? <laughs> <laughs> Why? Ah, I just want to... Um, you know, model, uh, model my girlfriend's clothes. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. This, you know, do it for the fans. I don't know. <laughs> do it for the fans, exactly, bro. Well, anyway, that's it. we got we got football all dolled up. So this article here is about. Um, Letting your partner cut your hair is the ultimate coronavirus relationship test. I thought the ultimate co- coronavirus relationship test is when they take a swab and put it in your fucking nose and go down. <laughs> That's the actual test. That's the actual test. This is the coronavirus relationship test. Yeah, so apparently this article talks about how you allowing your partner to cut your hair gives growth and trust in your relationship. 
<laughs> oh, what a little shit, bro. So what now? If your partner, if your partner cuts your hair like shit, so you got a shitty haircut and you and got, you a, got shitty a shitty partner. partner. Uh, I rather, I rather <laughs> just grow my, my hair, hair bro. Can you imagine, like, your girlfriend dumping you and saying, "This is not working out. Just the way you hold the scissors, I can't handle." <laughs> <laughs> It's not me, it's you. It's have, you, you, have, you <laughs> have you ever let uh, a girlfriend cut your hair? Nah, just comb it. Yeah, but that's because they want like it's like a Barbie doll, that's why they comb it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you trying to make me look like fucking Brad Pitt? Like, bitch, it's not gonna work. What do you mean Brad Pitt? You mean, you mean Ken from Barbie, the Barbie doll? <laughs> Either way, I am what I am, okay? I'm a raggedy looking motherfucker, okay? Well, look, my girlfriend, my girlfriend does my hair, bro. She she blow dries it, straightens it. Shit, bro. Yeah, it comes out yeah, nice. Hooked you up. Well, she did she pass the relationship test? Definitely, bro, definitely. Well, even <laughs> with or without hair, she passes it. Okay, okay cool. cool. The coronavirus, coronavirus relationship, relationship test. test. The next the one next is one the HIV, HIV relationship, relationship test. test. Hey, you don't, you don't want to fail that, that one. one. Yeah. It does go back. <laughs> or the TB relationship test. Yeah, bruh. The HPV relationship test. But it's, what's quite interesting in this article, the one girl says she was nervous to cut his man's hair. Some guys get so obsessed with their hair. Yeah, yeah you hey some some guys are like Samson out here. You cut their hair, they lose their strength, bruh. Yeah. That's true. I I used to feel like that, but it's not like that. <laughs> I realize I still have even after I cut my hair. <laughs> you've had your hair cut, you've had your toes cut, you out here, bruh. Still strong boy. But I haven't had my foreskin cut. <laughs> T foreskin boy, we out here. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> more girth, boy. Got more girth. <laughs> oh. One of the other article would be letting your Sangoma cut your penis is the ultimate coronavirus relationship test. <laughs> ah, no, kiss up. Ah, kiss up, bro. I don't need to know my relationship with my Sangoma, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my, my relationship with my Sangoma is quite uh, blessed. <laughs> that is Michael Jordan's first Air Jordan sneakers sold for a record fifty six hundred fifty six thousand. What five? Sorry, five. Yeah, I'm sounding like Zuma here, bro. Five hundred thousand. <laughs> Listen properly. Uh, five thousand. Oh, okay. Take it from the top. But Michael Jordan's first Air Jordan sneakers sold for a record five hundred sixty thousand dollars at how do you say Sotheby's? Sotheby's. Soft base. So I don't know. <laughs> it's not even Asian. Um, yo, I, I did the calculation, bro. That's 10 million rand almost. Jesus. Yeah, for secondhand sneakers. Well, secondhand feet. Yeah, well, I mean, it's memorabilia. It's not like they're going to be wearing it. It's not, I mean... Yo, but you exactly, bruh. It's memorabilia. You're paying so... Oh, it doesn't make sense, bruh. People got money, draw. Yes, yes. Yeah, and also, what is it? It's bragging rights. When you have your friends come over and you're like, yo, here's Michael Jordan's sneakers. I paid 10 million for these sneakers. And then everyone's like, cool, man. Well, what are you going to eat tonight? I'm going to eat pilchets and bread. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bruh. <laughs> Yo, you know what? I think I can. I think I need to get new friends, man. I don't. I don't like you, man. Out of fucking wasting your money on nineteen eighty five Jordan sneakers. I didn't know this about Jordan though. Uh, that is, like most Jordan basketball shoes, they are mismatched pair in size. Thirteen left and thirteen and a half. This guy's got. This guy's got. He's got big feet, um, <laughs> and they mismatch. You know what they say about guys with big feet that are mismatched? What? They got big socks that are also mismatched. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to. <laughs> but, you know, I, Michael Jordan was what? How, old, how tall was he compared to the rest of the basketball? Because when you look at that documentary, when you watch the documentary, he, looks, he seems pretty short. No, he's tall. This is just the, the guys in the NBA are freakishly fucking massive. But he's tall. He's like six foot six. 
It's 1.98 meters. That's a door. What a door length. But look at LeBron, LeBron and Shaq. Two, two above, two above. Kobe exactly, bro. That's Kobe what I'm saying. Oh, LeBron is 2.6. Yes, sir. Shit, Kobe was the same height as Michael Jordan. How crazy is that? Yeah, how crazy was that episode where they did that rookie match and uh, that all star all star game and Kobe was a was a rookie? Yeah, dude, that's insane. So let's talk about that documentary, man. It was dope, bro. I loved it. Dude, it's one of the fucking greatest documentary series I've ever watched. Yeah, not only is it cool if you're a basketball fan, but like as a documentary, it's brilliant. Like, exactly the way the way they built it up, the the mix. The drama, the way they switched between the past and the present, or not really present, but the beginning and the end type thing. That was, that was fucking crazy. My favorite thing about the documentary is how it, you got, it, it, it humanized Michael Jordan, right? Because for me, Michael Jordan was just like this, this symbol of like... Yeah, symbol on a sneaker. Yeah, even as a kid in the 90s, like we, you always used to see like Chicago Bulls uh, branding and Michael Jordan branding and Nike ads, but you never knew the guy. He was like Space Jam, even like he mm. was also in the Michael that Michael Jackson music video. Yeah, true. Um, <laughs> two Michaels for one. <laughs> yeah, didn't have Macaulay Culkin. Is it? No. What's cool about the documentary is like you see Michael Jordan is just like a normal dude. He he drinks, he smokes cigars. Yeah, but my, my favorite bit about that documentary was Dennis Rodman, bro. Dennis Rodman is a fucking legend, bro. That guy had he had zero fucks, dude. Zero fucks. I love, I love during a, the finals he went to the other side of America for wrestling, bro, <laughs> to do a wrestling gig. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's pretty gangster. I'm not gonna lie. And then he was banging Carmen Electra, and he went to Las Las Vegas for a week before having the time of his life, bro. He dated Madonna, bro. He did. He did. I don't know if that's a, a great thing or not. I mean, depending on what option is of Madonna. <laughs> and isn't he friends with like Kim Jong Un or something? Mm -hmm. he, there's a there's actually much check it out. There's a Vice documentary of Dennis Rodman and. Uh, some of the what, what did you call those guys? The NBA All Stars or whatever? Uh, not the All Stars. Those guys used to do those fat tricks and shit like that. The the troop. Um, no, not the Dream Team, man. They used to wear uh, the uh, the, ha the Harlem Glo Globetrotters. Globetrotters. No, the Harlem Globetrotters. So he took the Globetrotters with him to to North Korea, and in that Vice documentary, you can actually see. Um, like the propaganda and, and how they cover up stuff in North Korea. It's basically like, when you, have you ever watched that movie with Seth Rogen and James Franco? What's it called? Uh, the Interview. The interview. So that movie is very similar to that documentary. Which yeah, I've seen the documentary. I saw it a while ago, but yeah, it's hella interesting. Like uh, North Korea is, yo, it's fucked, bro. It's fucked. Why do yeah. they love that guy so much? I don't understand. I don't know, but it's conditioning, bro. You can condition kids from a young age to worship and idolize someone. I mean, how, why, how do you think there's so many religious people in the world? You know, it's I guess how we also have been conditioned to love um, Nelson Mandela, right? Exactly, exactly. People, I mean, people, people can't see a negative side of Nelson Mandela at all, you know? So, well, white people. Same thing, white but different. Yeah. Well, except for people who think he sold out to the white man. <laughs> yeah, there's also people who think that Nelson Mandela actually died in like 1980 something and the guy who came out of jail and stuff was just uh, an actor or a lookalike. Oh. Look it was Morgan Freeman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you know, this documentary did also like Scotty Pippen Man, Scotty Pippen. I, I love Scotty Pippen. I like his swag. I like his demeanor. I like his philosophy. He was a work. He was a hard worker, and he passed the ball. He was a team player. Yeah, and but without Scotty Pippen, without Scotty Pippen, there would be no Michael Jordan. You think so? Well, okay, that's an extreme statement. But like, there wouldn't be Chicago Bulls wouldn't have been so successful. That's I the think Michael Jordan would have been MVP. Yeah, and yeah, but Scotty Pippen helped 
Chicago yeah. Bulls to win. Yeah, that's that's what I realized about the documentary because I mean, when you grow up, you only know Jordan and you know maybe Rodman. You've heard of these names, but you don't realize. Yeah, you don't realize how important the other players were, like, and also Michael as well. Michael never wanted to play in a subpar team. That's why he didn't want to stay and reset the team because the owner wanted to get rid of all the old guys and keep Michael and get new guys. And Michael was like, nah. I'm only going to play with the best. I only want to play with the best. You know? Yeah. Yo, and yeah, that team was dope. It was Rodman, Pippen, Jordan, and then that white point guard. He's fire. That white point guard was dope. Yeah, but even that Croatian dude, Ko- Ko- Kovacek or whatever. Yeah, bro, that Croatian dude, bro. I like that he came back in the Olympics. Yo, they fucked Yeah, dude, they gave me shit and the guy was badass, bro. It was ice cold, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, those European basketball players can play, man. They they do. Yeah, apparently, apparently. But it's quite interesting, dude. This documentary got me hooked on basketball again because I used to play, not play, but I used to play on the PlayStation on uh, NBA '98. And yeah, dude. When I was a kid, and I and I used to love it. And also, our school had a huge basketball culture. And then I just stopped. You know, I just didn't follow it anymore. So I want to get back into it. I think it's pretty dope. Yeah, I know. I play basketball. Um, yeah, I know. I know you're a proper baller, so. Yeah, yeah but I stopped because fucking two sprained ankles. <laughs> but I, I really, I really want to get back into basketball. That the documentary did inspire me to pick to pick up the rock and start playing again. Yeah, and I remember in school we used to debate about whether basketball versus soccer. Who do you have to be? Who has to be more fit? After seeing the documentary, basketball, you have to be fit, bro. It's constant movement, four quarters, it's dude. physical, it's jumping, it's, it's sprinting, it's dashing, it's running, it's jogging. And also, dude, NBA Finals, guys play seven games. Yeah, 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 that's true, eh? Yo, and if you're, if you're like a main player, you play all those minutes, boy. You don't take a break. I don't understand why they never actually made NBA Finals just one game. And then it's a neutral venue. Money. <laughs> oh, yeah. Make more money. You have seven, you have seven games. You have no tickets. I like, I, like, I like that sort of... I like... Because they call it a series, right? So, so you can go 2-0 up in the series. And then the other team can come back. Then it's 2-2. And then it's 3-2. Then it's 3-3. And then game seven is like, yo. Yeah. I love that, like, that, that sort of idea of game seven being the final, final, like... Game yeah. seven final mentality. Yeah, it was pretty dope to see a lot of these finals. Like, yo, man, basketball is quite intense, bro. Like, some of the shots they made with five seconds on the buzzer and shit like that. That was crazy. Fucking that insane. one, that one episode where the Bulls were losing and then the the team scored at like four seconds remaining, and then yeah. Michael Jordan had a chance, and then the ball went in, and then it went out. It was like, oh shit. I like. I also like that Michael Jordan wasn't like an overnight success. It took him seven years to win his first championship. Yeah, I know. No, but he but he did win a lot of college basketball. Like his college basketball team was. Yeah, but it, from the from from the time he was a rookie in the NBA. Yeah, because you also got to remember when Michael got to the Bulls, he didn't come to a, a Bulls team that was already star studded. You know, it was a bunch of old guys who were doing drugs and alcohol, didn't give a shit. And then he came and then revolutionized the whole, let's get focused and let's try to win things. It's kind of like Arsene Wenger at Arsenal. Apparently, Arsenal were known to be like the fat team of the UK guys who were eating chocolates. And then when Arsene Wenger got there, he put everyone on a diet and made fitness the most important thing. And it revolutionized the whole of the Premier League. So, you know, that sort of influence. I love, I always, yeah, that's why I love that philosophy of Michael Jordan being like this ultimate, ultimate professional and hard worker and he's like so competitive that like it's kind of like crazy how competitive he is and then like he uses that com that compet competitive nature to like get to that level of michael jordan so he can do what he needs to do like he even makes like enemies out of people like somebody says some shit about him then he's like okay i'm gonna show you yeah exactly that guy's trash talking was next level bro yeah as well bro he was a trash talker he had ball skills he was athletic he was everything dude that's why when somebody says you're the michael jordan of something you know what i'm saying you're the michael jordan of 
that's like I really understand that now like Michael Jordan was probably the best basketball player ever and like to be the best you have to like like make those sacrifices as well you can't drink you can't fuck around you gotta work hard you gotta get up when you fail you gotta yeah. take the losses in yeah. life you gotta like keep on going even when you win you gotta keep on going yeah I remember who's this guy Robbie was telling me like when he used to go I think when these boat cruises with Trevor to do some gigs on, on these boat cruises. He said that Tre- like they would be partying after gigs and stuff all night, but Trevor would go to sleep and early in the morning, he'd be the first one exercising, trying to wake the guys up and getting focused. I mean, that, that sort of mentality is what defines the greats from, you know, the normal, you know, you. It's what, it's what, yeah, dude, it's, it's, it, at the end of the day, it's what makes you different, right? Excellent. The, the hours you put in the gym, the hours you put practicing, the hours you just put in not fucking around as well, bruh. Yeah, yeah. But also, like, for Michael Jordan to trash talk like that, you... I like people... Like, I, I think trash talking is cool, man, but you got to be able to back it up. Don't ever be a trash talker that can't back it up. <laughs> that's true, eh? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Don't, don't talk shit if you can't back it up. you got to walk walk the talk yeah apparently there's a psychological term for that like if you say something out loud in terms of trash talking or like motivation you it 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 motivates you to prove not only the people that you said that to but to yourself as well because you've heard it you've heard yourself saying it oh that's interesting yeah sort of like an affirmation that you tell to yourself yeah exactly so if i go for example if i go around telling people like yo i'm gonna go climb mount everest in five years the fact that you're saying it means that now you have a point to prove you said it. So you have to be a man of your word. And that's what I liked about Jordan. He was a man of his word. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was. Eh? Yeah. yeah. I like that, that coach as well, Phil Jackson. Oh, dude, what a legend. Legend, as well, bro. Legend, bro. Imagine <laughs> coaching that start, started team, bro. That, like so many egos, so many like yo, issues you're going to have to deal with in like, he, he was the perfect coach for that sort of team as well. Yeah, dude, like the way he was so chilled as well. Like he, I mean, that's in fact, like the whole Rodman situation as well. I mean, that coach could have been like, you, you're off the team or I'm going to put you on the bench or whatever. But he didn't. He knew that Rodman, doesn't matter what he does behind the scenes, Rodman is going to step up in the game. And that's what I liked about Rodman, bro. He had all this glamour shit happening on the, behind the scenes. But when he got on the court... The guy gave it 110%, bro. He plays, bro. He plays. He does what he needs to do, bro. Yeah. It was so funny. I remember so we can say that that Chicago Bulls team is probably the greatest sports team ever. Yeah, but I was looking at the history of uh, back-to-back wins in NBA Finals. Chicago Bulls doesn't have as many as the Boston Celtics. Ooh. Okay, but are we talking about white... White NBA now, <laughs> 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 because that's, uh, I can't I can't take that shit serious. Where they're wearing short shorts and everybody's white. Uh, yeah, that's true. Also, you got to think about it in the, in the what the 50s, 60s, 70s. NBA was just I'm not, I'm not too sure if a lot of black people were allowed to play basketball. I mean, college, yeah, they're too busy fighting, fighting for their fucking college. rights. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Actually. But let's check the date there on the Celtics. Winning record? When they see the NBA history. Um, NBA winners list. So, like, I mean, the fucking Raptors are winning now. Like, geez, dude, when I was interested in basketball, the Raptors were like, who the fuck? What do you think of LeBron? I don't know. I mean, on Instagram, I see a lot of clips of LeBron doing some crazy shit. But nobody's Michael. Ain't no Jordan. <laughs> Ain't no Jordan, bro. <laughs> yeah, Jordan just had that. Th- he has that thing, bro. Fuck. Is this- I love. I love Jordan. I love his. How's those baggy suits that he wears? Eh? <laughs> but that was the style back then, bro. But check here. So, so from 1957 till 1969, Boston Celtics, bro. Yeah, hey, bro. It's, that's white basketball now, though. That's that's the 50s. Nah, bro. I mean, there were teams like St. Louis Hawks and Minneapolis. I mean, if the Milwaukee Bucks are winning, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there was a team called the Washington Bullets. 
<laughs> but I must say, the LA Lakers also have a crazy fucking history in terms of how I many they've won. Yeah, the the big names do the Lakers, uh, New York Knicks, although they don't win. Um, Golden State Warriors, that's with Steph Curry now. Yeah, but Golden State Warriors has been in, in the last few years. Mm. Steve like, Kerr, that's the guy that was point guard for the Bulls. Oh yeah, but wasn't Steve Kerr replaced by Paxton? Or was Paxton before him? Yeah, he, he he replaced Paxton. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Pet Riley. Yeah. So the first ever winners of Philadelphia Warriors in 1947. Oh wow. 1947? Yeah. That's a year before apartheid started. Shit. There was definitely no basketball in South Africa then. <laughs> it's crazy that uh, basketball is not bigger in Africa though. Well, I, I remember in school, bro, because I mean, I went to international school and a lot of the guys were from like Zambia and Zimbabwe and Malawi. And they were all interested in basketball. Basketball wasn't like the number one thing. It was more actually more yeah. popular in African countries. When I go when I go play basketball at Zoo Lake, I'm like the only South African there sometimes. It's guys from Mozambique, oh, yeah. Angola. Yeah, it's it's like, it's like but it's like there's no money in Africa NBA. Africa basketball, you know? Yeah, I don't know. I think I think it's more of an investment thing. I don't think people are going to invest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'd be cool if they sort of like start a league, yeah, and then they start like uh, recruiting and drafting players from Africa to play in the NBA. I, I think Kenya should be the place where basketball should really, you know, blow up because if you got the Maasai there, those guys are going to be dunking nonstop, bro. <laughs> nonstop. All of the time, boy. <laughs> they already jumped so high, bro. A U.S. priest sprayed holy water on people with a squirt gun for drive through blessings. <laughs> bless them, bless them. I'll be like, I'll be like, uh, sorry, Father, can you also just do the windscreen? Um. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, didn't you see that uh, beggar at the, at the robot? Didn't he sort you out? <laughs> uh, also, also, the way he holds the gun, like if you hold it upright, it's for it's for like blessings for heaven. If you heard it sideways, it's for the demon. <laughs> Puma demon. Puma. Like, bang yourself up, demon. Bang yourself up. Then he pistol whips you. Pa. <laughs> but at least I mean, you'd, you'd rather be squirt, squirted with water from holy water from a priest than squirted with other things. Yeah, right. I've been squirted, and it wasn't holy water. That's for damn sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you know the priest is squirting on little boys though, but not with water. <laughs> Damn, you always gotta take it there, bruh. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> always. <laughs> always, but always. I grew up Catholic. He is Roman Catholic. I grew up Catholic. Fuck. I know all about it. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but uh, yeah, bro. Drive, drive throughs and drive bys are the future for now. We're gonna be doing jokes in a drive by. Yeah, dude. <laughs> drive by jokes would be worse, bro. So those would be cool if you. So this is the first stop you square to, and then the next stop is the collection plate. <laughs> <laughs> We get the money. Um, yeah, this is crazy though, bro. But like, he could have used a better gun. I mean, he doesn't have to use a gun. He can just, you know. <laughs> can use a, a spray, like an actual spray or... <laughs> a hose pipe. A <laughs> hose pipe. <laughs> <laughs> it's so interesting, bro. When I, when I bought my car, like I went to Memphis King and I went, to get, I went to get it blessed by the priest. Now, when you get it blessed, he obviously puts holy water everywhere. And then, you know, you open, he opened the engine, he asked me to open the engine. And then he started sp sp like spraying holy water onto the engine. And you're not supposed to put water on the engine. 
So in my head, I'm like, this motherfucker is going to ruin my car. <laughs> I thought it was a joke. You actually went to Mopomalang to bless your car. No, bro, I'm Murphy Kang, bro. I'm Jesus. Murphy Kang, sorry, I'm not listening. <laughs> no, I, I went to visit my parents when I first bought it because it's a brand new car. Yeah. And wh- while I was there, I was like, okay, let me go to the priest and get it blessed because my mom was like, you need to get it blessed. Also, when I go to Murphy King, I go to church because my mom's Catholic, so she's always like, let's go to church. Ah, it all comes together. So you've been touched. You've I've been, been touched uh, by the Lord, bro. I've been touched by the Lord. <laughs> You've been squirted by a priest. I've been touched. I've been touched by white Jesus. <laughs> I I only believe in white Jesus, bro. No wonder you're always telling that those jokes. <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, dude. Even when I was in varsity, which is kind of weird because I was a bit too old for the for the for that priest. But uh, <laughs> honestly, dude. Honestly, when I was at UJ. I used to go to, to Catholic church, Catholic services, and this one, his name was Father Bruce. And he was weird, bro. Like, he was very, like, you come and, like, come and talk to me and constantly after the, after the gig. And I'll be like, whoa, dude, like, you're taking it. I'm just, uh, I'm just here because there were these two Namibian babes I was, I was trying to hook up with. That's what was there. My man, my man, you're focused. You're focused. You know, you know it is. <laughs> yeah. So you think you're gonna start doing this in SA? <laughs> but here we don't we don't use water gun. We use doom. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's a hose pipe coming from the petrol tank okay you can drink this if you believe in Jesus he siphons it and sprays it into the, onto the speed <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, South Africa will be hey, especially ZCC if this happens to ZCC yo 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 also you gotta make sure in South Africa when guys pull a, a gun up on you hey you better make sure no other gun comes out, bro. <laughs> You're giving out your cell phone to the priest. Like, no. <laughs> that's the next window. Uh, <laughs> that's the, sh- the end of the show, ladies and gents. So I hope you guys enjoyed episode seven. Uh, all the subscribers, thank you for the new subscribers coming on. Just keep uh, checking your YouTube. Keep checking the Instagrams. Uh, hit likes. Yeah, guys, and, and please share. Please share this content. We, we, we're going to make some more. We're going to keep on doing this. It's just jokes. We're just having fun while telling you what happened in the week. Uh, yeah, so thank you for watching, guys. Thanks for watching, guys. And please make sure if you have any suggestions, anything you guys want us to talk about, please leave it in like, the comment section or just hit us up directly if you know us. Peace out, guys. Peace. See you next week. You want to keep the same time, same place.